Um, all right, everybody, we're going to get to my first guest. Um, she is ready now, so let's get her in here. She was one of the most iconic artists of the 90s when she was called the queen of alt-rock angst by Rolling Stone. She sold more than 75 million albums worldwide. Her latest is called Such Pretty Forks in the Road. It's out right now. I love it. Um, let's say hi to Alanis Morissette, everybody. Hi. Um, I'm literally <laughs> such a big fan that they were talking to me about um, the design for like our backstage for this this show. Yeah. And I wish that you were really at our show because I would have put you in your room because you and Annie Lennox were my first two that I, I like she's one room and you're one room. Um, there's like several different dressing rooms and I have the vinyl, um, you know, of the person on the, the door and it's called that room. And oh, you are one of my rooms because I'm I, so happy. I'm one of your rooms. You're one of my rooms. <laughs> it's like, what happens in those rooms though? Yes, it's know. so awesome. It's a family <laughs> show. It's not Please that make me proud. Yeah. <laughs> There's no, it's not as cool rock and roll stuff happening, but um, we, but anyway, I have the, the Jagged Little Pill, but honestly, I know everybody talks about Jagged Little Pill, but I mm. feel like sometimes you're that writer that like, I mean, literally like what people are thinking or having a hard time with or struggling with, like, it's like you put it, we can't make the words, like we can't get it out and you do it for us. I mean, cause a lot of, I mean, some of us are right. We write songs, we have fans and da, da, da. you're like on an epic scale. Like, is that like, is that a lot of pressure? Like when you release a record and, and it's, it's, you know, you're so vulnerable about it and so raw and like people are questioning, Oh, who's this about? What's this about? Or, you know, what are you going through? And is that, do, do you ever think of that pressure or you just put it out? I felt a lot of pressure after the tour for Jagged Little Pill finished and it was time to write the, the follow-up posh, you know, mm. and, um, so I remember going to a studio in Canada with my friend Tim when I was, you know, under the auspices of starting to write again, and I really didn't want to write. It was that pressure buckle thing. Yeah. And I turned to him and I said, I really don't want to write. And he said, he was the only person, because everyone else said, but your fans are, you're going to let everybody, you know, everyone had an answer that was going to shame my needing some rest. Um, yeah. But then my friend Tim, he just turned to me and he said, well, let's just go get a sandwich. <laughs> And I, it was the first time that the pressure had been completely taken off. So we yeah. went and watched a movie, I think, grabbed some food. And then when I came back, I wrote, of course, the lies such that I wrote the first song for the for supposed former infatuation junkie oh that night. Which is another great album. Like, <laughs> thank, thank you. So great. Thank you. But yeah, the pressure, the pressure, you know, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming you can relate. Like every grocery store... You know, when's the next record coming out? When's the next record coming out? So, yeah. you know. You know, it's art. So you kind of have to wait till you're inspired, right? Right. The receptivity has to, it's almost like I show up, this is, this is the filter. So it siphons through my intellect. But the main part is, is me being receptive and more yin. And most of my life, I'm such an alpha and I'm, you know, I'm in go kind of lean forward mode. So when it comes to writing, I have to sit back and just receive yeah. But then make sure I get it on tape. So it takes however, you know, a lifetime of living it. And then it, for us or for me, it takes yeah. you know, 10 minutes to write it or 15 minutes, but whole lifetime of living it. Her new album is called Such Pretty Forks in the Road. Great title. Um, this new album is very personal, you say, right? So you get into depression, hard emotions, hard conversations. So did you have second thoughts about releasing that? I mean, I know that you've always been a very open writer, but you know, it's like, especially in this time when everybody's kind of going through, do you have second thoughts about releasing it? No, actually, I used to be terrified in the night before any release. And then once it's out, time and time again, it just became so normal to share um, autobiographically and, and in a raw way. So now I'm a lot less afraid. And a lot of people have intimated that it takes so much courage to write the way that I write. But for me, it takes courage to talk with people directly and resolve conflict and bring up something tough or stand up for myself. Or Whereas in a song, I'm writing that alone in a room. No one's watching me. No one cares. It's, you know, I used to think I could get away with just writing about it and then running away and not having to deal with human beings. <laughs> but apparently that doesn't work. It's hard, though. It's hard, especially when you have a lifetime. If I'm, I'm imagining you're saying, like, you know, in person it's a different thing that's probably took a while to become the bold person in, yes. in person, not just in song, right? Right. So people would hear the songs and they'd imagine they were going to meet someone at the radio station or wherever it was. And I would walk in and I, whatever I was being that day, I might've been meek or quiet or more yes. contemplative. And I think their perception was that I was going to come in and just like rip everything down and spray paint the walls and just, you know, which, you know, yeah. 
these days. <laughs> Depends when you catch me at home. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, I think my main goal over the last many years has been to take to, to take the clarity and the empowered communication that it takes to write a song and, and actually apply it while sitting across from someone where, you know, the fight, flight, freeze kicks in when we're in conflict, but it's not kicking in when we're writing. When we're writing, there's this lucidity and this flow. It feels like- And there's an openness because you're alone in your own moment. And sometimes yeah. I feel like artists, we're always surrounded by people. And sometimes we do that and we, we choose that. And sometimes it just happens. Yeah. And so sometimes it's your only like solace. It's your only yeah. like place to go. Um, on your new album, um, there's a song called Smiling and I- love it so much like it's because it's not I know a lot of people will say oh that's for people in the limelight it's not that's for people no. in any vocation like any any part of your life you can be having that moment to where it's like I'm going through so much but I guess I'll keep smiling since that's what everyone's expecting and yeah. I and there and I'm supposed to be fine you know but, and especially as women too right I mean we're <laughs> we're sort of archetypally almost it's almost like a demand to be that hearth overseeing nurturing which is normal for us in our bodies but we're also applying ourselves in this whole yang world too so for me it's 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 all these different archetypes that i love being the teacher the mom the artist the activist the outspoken the you know the channeler the all these different archetypes and just the hats you know i, I mean i'm talking to you you of all people know the hats of mom and then producer and then so just going through all these different roles and because of the sensitivity and the empath qualities, I'm just so much more responsible for making sure I can take breaks, even if it's hiding in a bathroom. I mean, I, you know, carrying earplugs with me, don't tell anybody. No, no. <laughs> I'm wearing them right now. No, just no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reading your lips. I'm, I'm actually not I listening think. to you. Oh. I get your word you're saying, Kelly. <laughs> No, that's so true. I, I literally, I, that's, I, I've had this conversation with someone very close to me and I'm like, I'm not trying to be rude. Like when I pull out the earbuds and like the music, I literally, sometimes I'm not even playing anything. Right. I just want silence. I just want a moment to where I'm not being talked at or I don't feel like I'm having to engage. Cause I feel like not, it just not our jobs, all jobs. I feel like we're a society. Exactly. That is a, a society of onness, like yes. to be off. I mean, our nervous systems were not meant to be in, in cortisol mode 24-7, and we're actually yes. chronic stress in the way that we're all experiencing. Fire is fire, yeah. It's, it's like, yeah, it's constant. I know, yeah. I know. Killing but me. anyway, I just, I, I'm such a fan, and I did find out, somebody told me that you had been to one of my shows, and I'm going to tell you, if that's true, I am so glad that no one told me you were there, <laughs> because I would have... A Christmas turkey. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, when people come to my shows whom I adore, I'm like, you specifically can't tell me because that's all I'm going to think about when I'm oh, on stage. Oh, no one ever told me. Not even after. Like, I, no one ever told And I, I literally, <laughs> there's me. a strict policy on my tour. I don't want to know if anyone in the audience is like, I don't care how famous. I don't want to know because it makes no. me nervous and I don't get nervous. So when you're singing, are you thinking of that person the whole time? When I, I, I did the musical for Jagged Little Pill and a bunch of the beautiful, beautiful singers, performers, portrayers came to see my shows. And unfortunately, I'd find out that they were in the audience before I was, you know, and they're <laughs> the most That's beautiful so much singers. Pressure. And I just was like, oh God, and now I have to watch my pitch and hit all the right notes and <laughs> it's horrifying. So I, I learned my lesson probably the, the more challenging way, which is my whole show gets kerfuffled if I know um, someone in the audience whose how, voice or art I love. How is that though? I mean, like you, you had, a, I mean, you're, you have such a great catalog and you were such a, just a pop culture icon that like they did a whole musical of, I mean, is that, was that crazy? It was, it was the first amount of objectivity I've ever had on the songs, which was cool. And then also collaboratively, I've always felt that theater was this nomadic communal village thing that I, as a, as a solo artist, it, it got pretty lonely on the road just as a solo artist doing everything kind of alone. Mm -hmm. And I know that bands and the Beatles and everyone had their own challenges for, for being a group, I get it. But being alone was, was, a, was a rough one. So being it's in so a community hard. of people in the musical and... Uh, Diablo Cody pulled all the characters out of the songs themselves so there's this real kind of integration between the music and the story and 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 some people were afraid of some of the content and I just called them and I said 
I got this. I will back anything up that we bring up that is scary. And Lord knows Diane Paulus, who directed, did tons of research to be respectful for in each category of challenge, you know, just, they did so much research and I did a little bit myself too. And, but I, I think, like I, woke and, up. I don't think anyone, it would be upsetting to see something with your like inspiration, your work and not see something raw and real and intimate because it would be so opposite of you. It seems right. like at least musically speaking. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I just think that's, I mean, you've achieved a whole nother level when they're like, we want to make a whole show about you. <laughs> it's like, that's, so that's, thank God it wasn't about me. I'll do a one person play at some point or musical play. I, I have little flashes of it. Do you have that where for a long time, I just have images or pictures of where I was going next. And then sometimes it's fully blank screen. And I'm like, uh oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that then, one you're, then you're at pretty forks in the road that's yeah. it yeah. And you know how great americans are at living in the question mark we're not you're like we're oh my god at it. yeah no, we're all being asked to do it right now right there's some pretty big limbo question marks so our bodies and our psyches we're in this we're in this frozen flight place depend like again where it depends when you catch us you know it's so much uncertainty i know it's a roller coaster for everyone it's yeah. it's so awesome to talk to you i'm i'm so sorry i talked yeah. your face off but i'm I live for it man. i live for it you're so so good okay so okay goodness. oh well everybody be sure to check out alanis's new album such pretty forks in the road it's out now my favorite smiling but whatever subscribe to my channel subscribe to my channel subscribe to my channel subscribe to my channel Please don't make me keep going.